If you're in the market for a retro handheld emulator around the $80 or lower range, you've probably been looking at something like the Miu Mini Plus or the RG35XX or even the RG35XX Plus, which I recently made a video telling you why you should probably just go for the original instead of the Plus, save yourself a couple bucks. But say you got a little bit of extra chump change and you want to play those N64 games, you want to play those Dreamcast games, maybe even a little bit of PSP or even the Nintendo DS, well then the answer is neither of those are the option you're going to want to go with. You're going to want to go with this. This is the Anbrenic RG35XXH. Really starting to hate these names. And it's basically the RG35XX in a horizontal form factor, which is where the H comes in. Pretty sure it stands for horizontal. That or it's like... Hepatitis. Nope, that's probably that's probably not it. It's probably horizontal. All the H words my brain could have come up with, I chose hepatitis. But anyway, the main reason you're going to want to go for the H instead of the plus is because of the thumbsticks. The plus does not have thumbsticks. And if you want to play N64 and Dreamcast, well, you're going to need some thumbsticks. That D-pad just ain't going to cut it. So let's get into this thing. Let's really get into the nitty and the gritty while we're at it. Might as well. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at the RG35XXH. Honcho. So here it is, the RG35XXH. This can usually be found for around $67.99 with the 64GB card for the OS and whatever games are included out of the box. Or you can pay a bit more for the added 128GB of storage that will go in this second SD card slot here. Depending on where you get this from, it's going to be a bit more. I'm going to have an Amazon affiliate link in the description for this as well as maybe one or two other links. The Amazon link, you're probably going to find this thing for a lot more than it actually retails for but you're also going to get the added benefit of the Amazon fast shipping and return policy. Inside the box you're going to of course have the unit itself, a screen protector which I've chosen not to install, a USB-C to USB-A cable, no charging brick included which is pretty standard for these things, and a little instruction manual which is going to get you started with the basics. You've got your A, B, X, and Y buttons on the right as well as one thumbstick and the start button, a D-pad, your other thumbstick, and the select button on the left side. Along the top you've got your R1 and R2 buttons as well as your L1 and L2 buttons. You've got the F button here, which is what you're going to use to open the menu and whatnot in-game. An OTG port here, a DC and OTG port here, which is the one you're going to use to charge the thing. A mini HDMI port so you can dock this thing to a TV or a monitor. And a 3.5mm headphone jack. Along the bottom you've got two speaker grills and your SD card slot. One for the OS and one for your extra games. This included SD card with the OS is also going to have a bunch of games installed out of the box. On the left side you've got your volume rocker. And on the right side, you've got your power button and reset button. Then along the back, you've actually got these two rubber pads so that when you lay this down on your desk, it's not going to slide around or scratch the back. It has a 3.5 inch 480p IPS display, which looks really nice and crisp and clear. The CPU is the all winner H700 and the GPU is a dual core G31 MP2. It's got one gigabyte of LPDDR4 RAM and it runs on a Linux based operating system. This is the black model. It's also available in a transparent white and a transparent purple kind of similar to the transparent purple here on the original RG35XX. It's not like super purple, but there's some purp in there for sure. I actually really like the look of this black one. I almost wish it didn't have these colored face buttons and it was just all black, but it still looks nice and these face buttons have a sort of a sheen kind of gloss to them. I really like how this looks. There's an older Neo Geo handheld called the Neo Geo X, which I've always thought looked really cool. It was very sleek and minimalist looking and this black version of the, I'm just going to call it the H because RG35XXH is a mouthful to say 12 times in a video. Anyway, I just think that this looks kind of similar to the uh, the vibes that that Neo Geo X gave off, and I like how it looks. The icons and background setup I have here are not what you're going to see when you take this out of the box, but it does have some different backgrounds and icon packs that you can use to change this thing if you want. If you're wondering if this has Garlic OS installed out of the box, no, it does not. I don't believe any versions of the H have it just yet because the H is so new and Garlic OS 2.0 is currently in alpha for the H and the Plus. It is fan-made software that Anbrenic likes so much that they put it on the new versions of the original RG35XX. Now back when I did my video on the original RG35XX, Garlic OS was still not quite ready for the H or the Plus. That could have changed by now, or if not, it could, that could change by the time I finish editing this video. Who knows? These things can move pretty fast, but from what I understand, it's still in development. Speaking of important features, what features does this include out of the box? 
Specs wise and features wise, this is basically the exact same thing as the RG35XX Plus. It's got the same Bluetooth support, the same Wi-Fi support, the same processor, the same GPU, the same screen even. It's just in a different form factor with those added sticks. From your home screen, you have two different ways to access your games. You have the games room menu. It's got a number of different games and consoles and whatnot that you can select from here. But not every system that's supported on this thing is going to be in this menu. You actually have to go out to the second one, which is RA game, RA short for retro arc. And that's where you're going to see systems like the Dreamcast, the N64 and the Nintendo DS. Yes, in addition to N64, Dreamcast and PSP, this thing does also run Nintendo DS and it runs pretty well. This 64 gigabyte version does have some DS games preloaded out of the box, minus a couple here that I added that are not included, so don't get too excited. But it does work pretty well. You can use the thumbstick to control the stylus icon on the screen for your touch input, because this thing is not touchscreen. And you can use the shoulder buttons to change the layout of which screen is in focus, or a horizontal or vertical layout in case you want to see both screens at the same time. Now this thing is going to run 16-bit and 8-bit retro games pretty well, even up to PS1, Super Nintendo, NES, Game Boy. All of those games run pretty well, but it's when you get into the games beyond PS1 that the performance is going to be a little bit more hit and miss. Dreamcast games all run flawlessly out of the box for me. No having to adjust the settings, it just looks buttery smooth even faster games like Crazy Taxi and Sonic Adventure 2. But then N64 kind of struggles with certain games. I was able to run Banjo-Kazooie pretty well, but only after changing to the Mugen Core by pressing the Y button and selecting the core before running the game. Then I adjusted the resolution in the RetroArch menu once the game launched, and after that it ran fine. Before changing the core, the game ran not very well at all. Weirdly though, when I went back to try to show footage of how poorly it was running, it, it worked. It just, it just worked. I, I don't understand what happened. And yet the same fixes made no difference with WWF No Mercy, which is a stuttery slideshow the entire time. <laughs> Except when I went to go record footage of that, that started to run well. So again, it's hit and miss, literally with the same games and the same system and changing the settings or not. Sometimes the games work well, sometimes they don't. At least with N64, Dreamcast has been pretty consistently good. PSP is also going to be very hit and miss, in fact it's probably going to be the hardest system on this thing to run. God of War Ghost of Sparta, which was preloaded onto the SD card that this came with, runs very poorly through and through. But then Mega Man X Maverick Hunter runs pretty good, minus the occasional stutter. DS again runs pretty well, so that's going to make this a great contender for some of the DS Pokemon games if you're into those. Speaking of, because I know people will ask, there are a bunch bunch of Pokemon games preloaded, but they're all Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. Pokemon Soul Silver, nowhere to be found on this 64 gigabyte version. Heart Gold as well, obviously, just putting that out there. Games featuring a certain Italian plumber are also nowhere to be found. I imagine these companies do this as a way to try to stay out of legal troubles, even though they have other games from Nintendo installed on this thing. So yeah, you'll need to supply your own ROMs for that certain plumber if you want to jump, man. I should mention that when you put this thing into sleep mode, it doesn't actually put the console to sleep. It turns off the screen and disables the buttons so that you don't like play any games while you're not playing any games, but it does drain the battery, at least while you're in a game. You might want to have to exit the game and then put it to sleep to save some of the battery, but ultimately if you're not going to be playing this thing for a few hours, your best bet is to probably just turn it off. Build quality on this thing is really nice. It doesn't feel cheap. It actually feels kind of weighty and this thing feels good and feels premium, especially compared to the RG350. It's not to say that this thing feels cheap, but it definitely feels lighter and a little bit more toy-like than this thing here, which feels a lot more premium and uh, just a lot better overall. Now, despite this thing feeling premium, it's also not heavy. So don't feel like you're gonna get fatigued using this thing. It does not have a metal body like a lot of Ambernick's more recent horizontal handhelds. It's all plastic, so it's gonna be nice to take around with you when you wanna take something small and compact to play games on the go. This thing is pretty pocketable. It's pretty slim and it's not very huge at all. I mean, compared to the iPhone 14 Pro I have here, it's actually a pretty similar form factor when it comes to the width and height and whatnot. It is going to be thicker than my iPhone is with the case, but not by much. The thumbsticks may make it a little bit hard to pocket sometimes, but they're really not all that bad and they are recessed into the system. Compared to the trigger buttons on the original RG35XX and the Plus, those may get snagged in pockets a bit more often than the thumbsticks will on the H. As far as the size and form factor, it's basically almost identical to the Anbernic RG35 
no, what is this? RG350, which I reviewed a couple years back. I definitely much prefer the look of this model, but I mean, as you can see, they're pretty similar. Obviously, this is going to be much more powerful than this, but yeah. Here it is compared to an actual PSP. As you can see, the PSP is a bit wider, but the H is a little bit taller, I guess? They're not really similar other than the fact that they're horizontal handhelds. Honestly, to me, the PSP is much more comfortable. It's like the most comfortable handheld I think I've ever used. This is also very comfortable, but just not quite as comfortable. Here it is next to the PlayStation Vita. That's upside down. Here it is next to the PlayStation Vita. This is a slim model that I got as a Japanese import with this blue color, which looks really sick. Much bigger, of course. The screen itself is almost the size of the H. Here it is next to a Nintendo Switch Lite, minus the case that I have on my Switch Lite, but it's basically the same size as the Switch Lite with the case on. And as you can see, it's pretty small in comparison to a Switch Lite. Another pretty popular handheld these days is the PAL Kitty RGB30. Very similar looking device, it is a little bit taller, it's about the same width, but it is a bit thicker and a bit taller. Review coming up for this by the way, so subscribe for that. And here it is compared to a Steam Deck. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a difference there, just it's subtle but uh, it's there. So yeah, overall, I really like this thing. If I had to choose just one of these things to take around with me out of the ones I've reviewed previously, the Mi Mini Plus, the RG35XX, then I would probably go with this one. The thumbsticks and the better performance just make it kind of better overall. It's more comfortable, it's just easier to use for longer periods of time than these Game Boy form factor ones that are pretty small, they're pretty nostalgic, but they're just not great for long periods of use. If I wanted to take this on the go with me to play Pokemon or Final Fantasy for a while, this is going to be perfect for that. Now, do I like it more than the Pow Kitty RGB 30, which I have yet to review? You're just going to have to subscribe to find out. But uh, for now, yeah, RG35 XXH, pretty good. Maybe consider picking this one up, especially for the price difference. Honestly, price difference, this thing's going to be more expensive than this thing generally. So yeah, this is good. Go with this. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all she wrote about the RG35XXH. Well, it's all that I wrote. Because, um, it's the end of the script for this review. If you do want to pick one of these up, I will have affiliate links in the description from various sources, probably Anbernick, maybe Amazon, and who knows what else. It's all going to be there in the description for you, so make sure you check that out. And make sure you also share this video with a friend so that they can also see the goodness of the RG35XXH. If you enjoyed this review, Make sure you leave a like and a comment. Let me know why you liked it. If you didn't like it, dislike it and let me know why as well. Just be kind. Be kind to me, be kind to others, and most importantly, be kind to yourself. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. I've got reviews for other handheld emulation consoles and whatnot coming up, as well as a couple of other things that have nothing to do with those. But, uh, you know, more of those too. So, yeah. All right. I've got videos here. Make sure you watch one of those. And yeah, thank you. I'm out. Bye. Go. Watch your video. What are you still doing here?